So I decided to fess up to my dad and be like, Dad, that's it. I quit art. And he starts laughing. He's like, congratulations. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about, you psycho? My goodness. Can you believe where we are right now? Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California. <laughs> uh, in time, as well as the space continuum. Ah, uh, yeah, the last segment this is the of last this segment. stream. We've done we've done so many of these, and I I can't tell you how much gratitude we have for all of you in the chat who have who have hung with us through this whole thing and and brought your positivity and your energy. Um, every time we get off the the a call, the the artists are just so excited about how awesome you guys were for for really bringing it. And so, thank you for making this a special day with us to all of you guys out there. Um, and now, wait, 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 we got a trivia answer. Oh, we got a trivia answer. Every good, time. good, good, Lord, good, Lord. Okay. <laughs> the question was, what was the last movie to win the Academy Award for Best Picture with no credited visual effects? And the answer is Max. Actually, what is that? <laughs> The Unforgiven. Um, or yeah. slightly, you, we, we drop the the, it's like Facebook. It's oh, it's, it's just better. Simply. Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Please Unforgiven. forgive me. Please, please forgive. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, so if you got that, you're getting free kids. You guys know the chill. Um, now, we couldn't be more excited about this. This is our, our, final, our final crescendo of this whole event. It's been built into this. It's been, it's been. We a, had to finish strong. It's been a big drum roll. And I can't believe we get to finish this strong. So we, we got Carla Ortiz. Carla, come on down. <laughs> what up? <laughs> Guys, this is so cool. Carla Ortiz, um, y'all know her work from, from anything <laughs> cool on a screen you've seen in a long time. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about that. But first, Carla, how are you doing? I'm pretty chill. I'm also, yeah, I'm also like, it's so funny because like for an online convention uh, where you think, oh, I'm going to be at home and I'm going to be fine. No, I'm just as tired as if it was a real life convention. We were talking about that this morning, too. I was like, it is Sunday, isn't it, man? I, I feel I feel like we went out and partied last night, but we didn't. So. Yeah, yeah. You just stay home, but you're up until really late, hanging out with people, seeing panels, doing panels, streaming. And then at the end of the day, it's like 3 a.m. and you're just like... <laughs> uh, Carla, I, I think you've started a movement here because the chat now is just filled with oily fans. Yeah! <laughs> oily fans! They're the best! <laughs> this is now has turned into an oil painting oily fan only zone. <laughs> so if, if y'all don't know what's going on, Carla uh, has been throughout Lightbox. She's had an incredibly busy schedule. Uh, doing some oil paintings. One um, from two days ago, as you can see it far in the back corner there. Um, but tell us about Oily Fans. What's, what's happened in the last 24 hours? <laughs> so um, I've been streaming for a while, and I decided one of the main reasons I wanted to stream was for oil painting. It took a while to get the setup going, and finally got it for Lightbox. And literally about the first hour or so, we start throwing puns around about oil painting. And uh, we all know, you know, about fan sites. <laughs> uh, but specifically, it became about oil painting. And it became really wholesome and really wonderful. And we just talked, dark, you know, started talking about oily fans, how we're all about the oils and how we end up, you know, how like at the end of the day, because it's oils, your bangs get oily, you're, you have oil painting in your hands, oily fans. But that's the part of it. And it's just been fantastic. And so, uh, I even bought the domain name oilyfans.net. So we're going to. <laughs> now, I want to put up varnish videos. <laughs> <laughs> like, and uh, yeah, I want to do something with that. But I've been um, really enjoying uh, streaming oil painting live. It's been so fun, so much. In fact, and I'm probably gonna make it a regular thing. So yeah, nice. oily on, fans on oilyfans.com. Dunnet. 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 Well, so stay, stay tuned for that, y'all. <laughs> um, well, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know how we followed that up. Uh, I was planning about asking you about your childhood. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, maybe, <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> That's our show, folks. <laughs> I see everybody. Bye. This is it. This is it. You guys have worked really hard to end it on a very oily note. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> beyond beyond your uh, uh, raging fan group of oily fans, uh, you also have made a, a, a pretty big name for yourself working on, on some of the, the coolest Marvel projects. Um, you know, every everyone knows your work from Avengers and working on Black Panther and and on Doctor Strange and stuff. Um, but I was hoping uh, we could go back a little bit to the beginning because I think you have such a cool story that um, that I think people want, will want to hear. Um, so I'm gonna try to wipe the smile from my face and ask you very seriously. So, Carla, you were born on Halloween, huh? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, clearly. <laughs> it's a very fitting, uh, very just, yeah, it's totally like the perfect day to be born. Because you always have a party, you know? Right? You're, yeah, there's, you're, there's, I mean, there's always a party. Yeah, and, and you can pretend that it's about you, right? So, like, you can just be like, oh, no, 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 there's no holiday here. It's all, it's all me. Everyone got dressed up just to to, just, to say what's up for you. Yeah, yeah it goes yeah. with the skull that you keep behind you there. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I got yeah, no. <laughs> and I'm constantly dressing in black, so I think it's like I don't know. That's my. It's, it's uh -huh. my <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Well, I, I've heard you say before, which I thought was interesting, that um, you grew up with a, a, a artist father, a musician father, mm -hmm. um, and in Puerto Rico, right, Puerto Rico, and but you're. <laughs> but I can't oh, I'm, not, I'm not correcting you. I'm just like, hell yeah, Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, but but I, I've heard you say that your your parents did a great job raising you. However, you spent a lot of time with adults. You didn't spend you you didn't have a, a big kid group around you. So is and that's where you you started founding. That's where you found your love for art, right? Yeah, it was super funny because like, um, and by the way, my mom, she's an artist as well. So she works in fashion too. Oh, so. super cool. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, it's super funny because they tried their best to move into neighborhoods with lots of kids, but they failed miserably every time. Like I'd go out with my toys. I'm ready to play. And like, you know, the old ladies are like brewing their yard being like, get out of here <laughs> just like, I would just like sink back out like oh no this place is not for me and I just bring out like the you know the coloring pencils and draw I used to draw so much uh Sonic the Hedgehog yo <laughs> nice. Nice. nice I have a like 200 page Sonic the Hedgehog comic book that I made when I was a kid now don't think it's like small panels it's like one you know page it's a panel but so, still, but it was I'm, like, it was one of those things. Cause I'm like, man, you know, my mom's always like, Carla, you should publish that online. The people would love it. And I'm like, that's blackmail. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and this, uh, this Christmas, actually, she brought it over. So I have it in a box so she can no longer blackmail me. It's, it's oh, quite you sh liberating. You should, you should publish that. People would no. want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, we're, Maybe we're, one page or two. <laughs> or, or on on oily fans, you need to do a tribute to it and do a, a Sonic the Hedgehog oil painting. That's an idea. Yo, <laughs> yo, not gonna lie, that is challenge mode. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the few characters I can draw completely from memory, like without a doubt. I own Sonic the Hedgehog. Damn. <laughs> so, so were, were you a fan of the movie? No, I didn't see it. I haven't Let's seen it. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, uh, as you went, you went to uh, uh, as I've heard you describe it before, your high school was kind of like Hogwarts for art, right? Yeah, man. So I went to La Central de Artes Visuales, hey, which is pretty much just art centered, like <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> it and, sounds way better. Yeah, yeah, for real. And it was really interesting because, like, it's a super giant, um, old Spanish architecture place. It had like a as an attic. It had like a you know basement. There were apparently like secret tunnels where students died in World War Two, which Whoa. you know it's crazy. There's like, a, of course, the haunted attic and 
it was crazy because like the inside was like full of like statues uh, and they would rotate them quite often. So sometimes depending <sighs> on the mood of the senior year, sometimes you'd have really lighthearted statues and then other times you'd have like really messed up shit. <laughs> wow. and, and it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been Hogwarts without a Professor Snape type character right oh my god look at you yeah <laughs> doing, doing research here <laughs> yeah yeah so so the way that the school works is that you from 10th you know sorry from uh seventh grade to ninth grade um you would have generic art courses so everybody would have you know basic art course to learn the basics at from 10 to 12 you would get to choose which art house you'd get to go to you could choose uh sculpture you could choose graphics design and the scariest of all the houses was fine art the reason why is because the teacher a luciano vega was renowned to be really 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 tough and yeah he had a bit of a snape persona he would actually wear like these like small heeled shoes <sighs> on hardwood floors and he would walk around and go like bah, bah. And if you're painting and you hear that, you're just like. <laughs> and one of the things is if uh, he was famous for if you didn't listen to his advice or if you were a jerk in class, he would grab your painting and then just chuck it out of the window from the third floor. <laughs> and only the janitor was allowed to grab it and take it out. <laughs> oh, so yeah. kids. Yeah, kids were scared of him, but he is actually a legit awesome nice guy. Like I went to visit him maybe like six years back and he was like, Hey Carla, what's going on? I'm like, who is this chill ass man? You, uh -huh. know? <laughs> you haunted my childhood. <laughs> well, <Wow>. yeah. <laughs> to, to a degree. I, I, I'm sure yeah. yeah. There's, there's a, a a light and a shadow side to each thing. I mean, I'm I'm sure he he got great That's work like, out of out of many of his students. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he I mean I was drawing a uh, cast, you know, when I was like 14 because of him, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. I mean, what, what a great name to Luciano Vega. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's a very like. I mean, right, that's put a that one villain. in the story. Totally. Like, that's, a, that's, like a, that's a villain that later on turns out to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> I told, yeah. Oh, no. It's a Luciano. Watch out. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> So shout well, out. And and so after after high school, uh, there's a really cool story I've also heard you tell, um, or a cool line from your dad. You, you there was a point where you wanted to quit, right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. really quick, when I left high school, I was really cocky. You know, I was like, I'm the best drawer of my class, which maybe maybe not, but that's what I believe. So I went and entered college, thinking, oh, you know, I'm gonna be big deal, and. Um, I found uh, an online website for artists, conceptart.org at the time, and they had a wonderful workshop. And I thought, oh, if I went to meet them, I could steal all their secrets because I really like their work. <laughs> and when I went and actually got to meet them, I realized, oh, no, there are no secrets. There's no button to just do cool work. It, it's actually hard work, and it's a lot of knowledge that I didn't have. So I got back to – I was living in Florida at the time, and I was just like, okay, that's it. I can't paint anymore. I can't do it. I don't know how I'm going to get there. So I decided to quit. I quit art completely for about two months or so where every time I would pick a pencil or a pencil, you know, paintbrush, anything, I would just like chuck it and cry. And it was just very emotional. So I decided to fess up to my dad and be like, dad, that's it. I quit art. Then he starts laughing. He's like, congratulations. And I'm like, what? What are, you, what are you talking about, you psycho? He's just like, well, Carla, you're not an artist unless you want to quit at least once. <sighs> so welcome. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> but but oh, it's God. true. It, it's it's a it's an odd thing to learn, but it's I think an important thing to learn. Um, that every single one of your favorite artists at some point or another has wanted to be like, well, why am I doing this? I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. Even in a room of your favorite artists, they will unironically be like, yo, I really like how you paint or I really like how you draw. I wish I were you. And they're not looking for compliments. They're legitimately saying, I wish I were you, kind of like face off. Um, and it's just one of those things that, you know, helped me realize that it wasn't like my failures in art weren't a reflection upon myself as a human being, but rather just that I didn't know. And I just needed to learn. And once I was able to detach myself from that, I was able to see art in a more analytical way where it's like, it's just a puzzle to be solved. 
So it was a very important lesson. So, yeah, I, I feel like as as artists, we you know, and working, it's it's very hard to separate the business from the person, you know, the product from the person, and and it it can be so devastating, especially in online culture, where you know, there's you can get. And just the way the human brain works, you can get 10 people saying it's awesome. And that one person who says, oh, could have done, you know, and, and, and then you go down that rabbit hole of of negativity. How do you um, how do you armor up against that? How do you how do you how do you keep yourself in the spirit of what your dad taught you? Mm, that's a really good question. I think it's one of those things where it's like you got to kind of develop a very tough skin. Um, mostly for yourself, because I feel like for most of us, like. People can say whatever online, but they're not nearly as harsh as we are to ourselves. <laughs> like real talk. I mean, like I've seen people be like, uh, I don't know about this. And I'm like, Psh, I've already told <laughs> myself that like 20 times. <laughs> get, get with the program, noob, you know? <laughs> so it's one of those things where like, I think, you know, having a tough skin, but also being really honest with yourself kind of kills a lot of that negativity. Cause if you're just like, if you know, if you're very honest with yourself and you're like, okay, well, I think I'm very good at this. I think I'm very good at that. And I think I need work in here. Then whatever people say, like, who cares, <laughs> you know? Um, and another thing too, at least for me, I always try to, you know, something that I learned early on is like, listen to people's advice and then decide whether to take it or ignore it. Um, and especially online where everybody has to say, I always kind of think of online space as like, everybody's hanging out, you're hanging out in a bar with all your cool friends and here come like two people that you don't know just being like, hey, I have opinions about this. And you're like, who are you, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> so like, I try not to give, you know, online comments too much credit and just be like you know maybe hey maybe there's a grain of truth maybe i could learn how to do that a little bit better or maybe that's just a drunken dude at the bar being absolutely ridiculous it's just in the online world <laughs> yeah good advice there <laughs> as you you know continued you know decided not to fully give up on art and continue to like move into art but also to move into starting to uh, have a career in art was there a moment when you started to feel confident that you would have a, a stable career as an artist? Holy moly, that's a question. Um, ah, yes and no. Uh, I, I, there came a point where I knew that my skill and my technique was viable to where I'm just like, okay, I can now produce visual results that can satisfy most clients that are looking for work that's similar to mine, you know, that are looking for like more realistic or live action type of stuff. So that I know that if I were ever to need work, I could, you know, and, and I grew my clientele enough to where I'm like, okay, if I really needed work, I got like five people I can contact and be like, hey, you know, scratch the door like a dog. Hey, let me in. <laughs> Or, or like Eric Andre, let me in, let me in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm too in the, in the internet. Um, <laughs> but I, you know, and I think like my career has stabilized to the point where I'm turning down more works than anything. But there's still that like weird like feeling of it's going to run out at some point, you know? Like I don't know what it is. And I think it's because like, um, I grew up like lower middle class, like sometimes we'd be like a little poor, sometimes a little bit on the middle class. So we were always kind of like, you know, you know what it's like to grow up with like your parents really worried about how they're going to be able to pay certain things. And you saw that. And I think that's something you tend to internalize, whether you realize it or not. So trying to let that go and be like, hey, I have worked hard enough. I have built a reputation to be able to deliver good results and to be good to work with and positive so maybe you should calm down <laughs> but there's always still the little voice in your head just being like yeah but what if one day everyone decides that you suck <laughs> you <know? laughs> and then you're just like oh, shit. but you know i i think it's a balance 
And, and I think that's just going to be life, you know, like as stable as your life gets, you know, you'll always be wondering, well, what if? And maybe that's our animal brain trying to store nuts for the winter, you know? Yeah, I, th I think it's so refreshing to hear, you know, someone at your level and at your skill talking about that, about, you know, that that little <laughs> voice in your head that's still questioning it. Um, I just want to yeah. acknowledge in the chat, people are uh, calling out all the magic cards that they're seeing uh, <laughs> on here. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? You know, Magic the Gathering is such an uh, acclaimed spot as an artist. What, what does it mean for you? And how did you how did you get into that? <laughs> I, I got I got a wild story for Magic the Gathering. If you want to hear about failure, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, so I actually got into illustrating people because I saw Magic the Gathering. Um, I was a kid going to a bakery um, and then saw incredible Brom Desolate Angel and a giant poster in a store that just opened up in my neighborhood. And I was like, what is that? I didn't even tell my dad. I just ran to the store. And he was like, of course, there you are <laughs> after having a mild heart attack. And, um, and I became obsessed. And I became obsessed with the illustrations and then later on with the game. When I was in college, I was playing Magic the Gathering nonstop. I had a sweet-ass black and white cleric deck. Thank you very much. <laughs> and... Um, and my goal was to have a magic deck for myself. That my goal was Magic the Gathering. I applied to Magic the Gathering for about four to five years straight online. No response, no nothing. And uh, the you know, I just kept working on my skill up until one day at a convention, I was super drunk and the one of my friends was just like, Hey Carla, pass me your portfolio. I was like, okay. So I gave him my portfolio. Pass it to the person next to me. That's Jeremy Jarvis, the creative, uh, now the creative director for all of Wizards of the Coast. And he's like, yeah, let's go. So the first card that I got was Tasa. And I was like, okay, it's on. I'm going to work really hard on this. Um, and, I, you know, I sent in my sketch. And I was like, this is awesome. And they're like, yeah, this is awesome. And about two days left for me to deliver the final. And I'm thinking, you know, I think I'm going to need like maybe about a day or two extra. I'm going to see if I can negotiate with them. And as I'm looking for the email to see, you know, the information, one of the things that I noticed was the delivery day was the third. And I look over to the day that it was when I was looking for that information as the 13th. So before on my first Magic the Card, Magic the Gathering card ever, which is that one that you're seeing on the screen, I was 10 days late and almost Almost by coincidence, the art director bang, emails me. It's like, hey, you're 10 days late. Where is it at? And I did the thing you're not supposed to do. I closed the email. And I had one of those moments in my bathroom where, like, if it was, like, for example, Breaking Bad, they just laugh at the bottom of, like, the basement and just laughs until they become a villain and lose all reason. That was me in my bathroom. It's just like, ha, 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 ha. And so I decided, okay, screw it. I'm going to shut everything off, not respond to anybody. Bad idea, bad idea. Respond. Always talk to your art directors. That was me, baby Carla. Bad baby Carla. And um, and so I just worked my ass off on that painting. And I'm like, if it's, I, I need it to be as good as it can be because I'm so late. It just has to be. And I gave it my all. Um, am I allowed to curse here, by the way? Yeah, that's important. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Because um, so I sent the the card over to Jarvis. So nervous because I'm thinking I botched it. I'm ten days. I'm so late, and I'm never gonna get to work with them again. Oh my god! And so I send the card over, and I immediately get a response from Jarvis, and he's just like, "Fuck yeah!" And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> holy shit um and i got to work with them more after that so there's a couple morals to that story if you're gonna be late it better be damn good um don't be late though and more importantly please talk to your art directors don't make them wait like i did that's that's a bad that's a no-no <laughs> Those are outstanding words for us to to, to, to to roll out here with. That you have so, so many. Good. I know. I know. You have so many good stories, though, and I want to do more of these with you because you're just a, a well of inspiration and energy. <laughs> Thank and, you. And well, uh, our, oh, oh, sorry, our, our kits team has has rolled out a unlocked code for oily fans. So it is. <laughs> the, the code is oily fans. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you got, if you put that code in on kitbash3d.com, the first uh, 10 people to use it will get a 50% uh, off their, their full purchase. <laughs> Shout out to Oily fans. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's so good. I didn't know about that. That's amazing. You guys are on it. Oily fans get it. Uh, Carla, you you are you have such amazing energy and enthusiasm. Thank you for for joining us here and and closing out this unbelievably crazy show for us. Thank um, you guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank, but I just thank you guys so much for having me. It's such an honor to be with you guys here today and be your your last your last oily time. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hopefully this is this is uh, only the 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 first of many times that we get to to hang out and uh, when the world turns back over and the apocalypse ends uh, and we're allowed to go back outside at least, uh, it'd be great to uh, to catch up and and hopefully yes. a light box next year. Yes, please, let's do it. Done. Follow with Carlos' work. Check her out. Uh, Ortiz Art on Instagram. Is that right? K Ortiz Art. And Ortiz you can Art. find that same tag for Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, just K Ortiz Art. And go on Twitch and subscribe or follow. It's follow on Twitch. Yeah, follow on Twitch. And that way you know when I'm always painting in oils. And oilyfans.net. <laughs> and oilyfans. Yeah, and then later. <laughs> in, a week, in a week or so. <laughs> Carla, uh, thank you. We'll talk to you really soon. Take care, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs>